So here's our next car, it's a Mercedes E350 CDI diesel V6 and we're going to give it a service and yeah, that's about it, just an oil service. So we're going to take this for a drive as it's been sitting up for a fair while. It's a little bit smoky, not too sure if you can see it on camera but there's quite a bit of smoke coming out the back. trail of smoke there. So we've taken it back from a test drive. Now we're going to check the coolant levels and do an engine service which is minor service just changing the oil. And there's plenty of coolant in there. It should be okay. And there is plenty of brake fluid. Now we've got the car jacked up and an axle stand underneath there. And we can go ahead and drain the oil, take off the under tray panel. We'll come down under the car. You'll see this under tray is in three different sections. So we've got a front section here, another middle section here, and then a further section back here. But I'm pretty sure the oil sump is in this middle section, so we'll get this off. There's a couple of 8mm uh, screws here. So we'll get all of these off and get this tray down. Once we've got these trays off, we'll slip our oil pan under there and drain that oil out. And the customer's just given us these and asked us if we can fit them while we're here. These are the uh, brake wear sensors. He's had new brakes on but they haven't fitted any new sensors, so we're going to put these on. And luckily enough, there's enough gap to get my hand in here without taking the wheels off. And that's pushed in. And it's pushed in here. That's done. I would normally just take the wheel off, but it's got a locking wheel nut. And uh, it's been over tightened, so it's not opening. So we can manage to get our hand in there and do that. Now we can just top up the oil. Just put some tissue around the oil filter housing here before we uh, unscrew it out. Just let that flip off. And turn it upside down and we can get this changed over. Put our new O-rings rubber seals on there. One at the top, one at the bottom. There's our old filter and seals, O-rings. And we get our new filter back in there. And it tightens it back up to 25 newton meters. Now that's all done, we can close up the bonnet. Now we're going to reset the service maintenance. And then you can see there it's gone 27 days past its service due date. So we'll get that cleared. And that's all done. So we were getting a uh, brake wear warning and service due. So this is another type of service, service A5. So we're gonna need to reset that as well. Now we've reset that, so there's 365 days left. And let's restart. Hopefully the brake warnings and service warnings are now gone. all clear so we'll be finished on this job and we'll see you on the next car the next van we're going today it's a Volkswagen Caddy and he's called me because he's having a trouble starting it he's changed the injection pump he's changed the tandem pump and he's changed the in tank pump and lift pump I'm gonna have a look at seeing if we can figure out what's going on doing diagnostic it's got a turbo under boost and the airflow sensor it's not a, a it's not a straightforward fault. Bad connection on this here, so we're gonna have a look at that. I might come back and say, Do you want my van call fire? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'll just <laughs> bridge over a you never know that, do you? temporary wire here. Yeah. Get some yeah. to get a better connection just for a minute. See yeah, then the insurance company. We've got the wire on, we'll come back inside. Hey, look at that. It started straight up. So that's the problem solved. It's taking off the fuse. I'm gonna clean all this up with a wire brush and put it back together. See there why it wasn't working. Now we've wire brushed that up, put it all back together, and hopefully it should be fine. That's restarted, so we're going to remove our uh, diagnostic machine now. All sorted. It's all sorted, and we'll see you at the next one, which is a uh, Ford Fusion. I think we're going to. And here's our next car. It's a Ford Fusion and the front suspension has collapsed overnight if we have a look here you can just see where that's collapsed but we'll jack it up and have a look at the spring and get it replaced okay now we've got it in the air we can have a look and here you can see the springs snap there just in that position there so we're going to get the wheel off and get this off i'll come around to the driver's side and this one has broke as well both broken at the same time or it looks like this one's been broken for a fair while to be honest so we've got the bonnet up just having a look at the condition of the bolt on this side doesn't look too bad and the one on this side has got a fair bit of rust on there the actual bolt is uh, almost non-existent down there and if you look there as well there isn't any coolant whatsoever in the engine poor car it's not being looked after now we've got the wheel off, you can see a little bit better. The spring has come down all the way down this strut here. So we'll get this bolt off 15mm. And we've just put some WD-40 and we're going to get this uh, top bolt off here for the anti-roll bar. It's a 15mm and a 6 uh, hex key. And on the strut hammer here, we'll just give it a few taps of a hammer until she comes all the way down. Our knee on it here, pull it apart, open these top bolts here. Just unscrew the last bit. And I've got the bottom held on my foot down here so it will catch that. Now the complete strut assembly is out, we'll get it swapped over with a new spring. So we've taken off the old, and here we're putting on the new. Just get that up enough so we can slide our bolt in here. We can get our uh, whizzy gun on it here. We just have to hold this with one hand so we'll go out do that off camera. Now that's done, we can release the pressure. Release the pressure from here, we'll get this strut back out. Just get our strut, slide it up into place, and then we can put some bolts on the top here. Now those bolts are holding in place, we're going to get the bottom in. And again here I'm going to use my knee to push down this uh, lower arm and get this spring in. Now she's in place, I just need to get it seating right. We we'll get that ball tightened up. Now we've got our axle stand underneath the ball joint here. With the axle stand under the ball joint, we can lower the jack, which will push the suspension up and align this uh, bolt over here. So we're going to lower it slowly. We should see the suspension come up to meet that bolt. Hold that there, and get the bolt back on. That's tightened up. These top bolts tighten back up. And wheel back on, it's all done. We can uh, lower it down and start on the other side. It's sitting a bit better. And we'll get the other side done, but we'll skip this part. 
and that's that. And we're all done. Now we can uh, pack up and we'll see you on our next video. Here's our next car. It's a Volkswagen Passat diesel and she's having intermittent problems of starting it and uh, it's losing power when she's on the road so we're gonna get inside and have a look. So we're gonna start it up. So you can see there we've got the uh, engine management light on so we'll uh, run a diagnostic and it is starting at the minute so all looks to be okay but we'll check the engine management so now we're going to run the scan on it so we're going to go in and have a look at the uh, engine control module here So we've got O2 sensor and the oil level thermal sensor. So it's not 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 what I was expecting. I was expecting some sort of fuel related issue or turbo related issues as well for the power loss. Okay, so we've just went underneath the car and there seems to be a pretty new oil level thermal sensor already on the car, so it looked like someone's working on this car already. I've had a chat with a customer and she said yes it's been out of garage uh, they've replaced the turbo and they've replaced a few other bits and pieces that she, that she wasn't too sure of so it looks like someone's already replaced that but they haven't reset the codes so we're going to reset the codes and uh, maybe replace the O2 sensor as well if that comes back but we're going to have a check at the, the fuel see what's going on in here so we've got the uh, fuel cover off here and what we're going to do is just shake the filter about just to see if we can see any aluminium filings or anything in there Too sure if you can see that on camera, but there is quite a bit. Settling on top of the filter there. You can see them. Loads of tiny little bits of aluminium, which means that the uh, fuel pump is breaking down inside. That's most likely going to be the, the problem. But we'll pull the filter out and see what the condition of it is as well. Yeah, it looks like this has been changed recently which she said they've also gave it a service it's always worth checking for your own for your own peace of mind so i don't know what the last mechanic has done now we can see it's a bit of a dark color in there but it doesn't the fuel filter is at least is new so we're just going to put that back in close this up and we'll take it for a test drive so we're going to erase the faults once the faults are raised, we're going to restart the car. Now we've got no engine light, so we're going to take it for a test drive, and then we can uh, see which faults are actually coming back. If we accelerate hard and then let go, we're getting a lot of scraping noises. Let's have a listen. Doesn't sound very good, and it turns out it. It's not only if we accelerate hard, it's if we just pass like 40 miles an hour. I'm not too sure what that noise is at the minute. So the scraping noise underneath is just there's some of the screws missing from the plastic uh, under tray. We've just uh, tied that up as best we can. Now we'll take it on a second drive again. And that under tray has fixed that noise. It's a lot quieter now. So here we can see the uh, O2 sensors come back on the diagnostics. We haven't got an engine management light come back on yet, but uh, she's parking this car on our driveway, which is on a, a large slope. And the problem she's saying was when she parked it frontwards, it, it wasn't starting, but she parked it last night 
with the front facing down and it did start but if you look at the uh, fuel range there there's absolutely no diesel in it so uh, maybe you know it's getting a better angle on the uh, on the on the diesel when she's uh, on the priming pump from the tank when it's facing downwards of course when you're so low on diesel it's gonna affect how it can pull it up so what I'm gonna advise her to do here is just to uh, put a bit more fuel in the car and then see how she goes again tomorrow um, I'm gonna feel it might be okay if she just put some extra fuel in it but you can see the uh, uh, aluminium shavings in the fuel tank so it's it's more than likely got a problem with the fuel pump which is uh, quite an expensive job so I'll have to uh, let her to fill the fuel up first and see how it goes from there and if need be it's gonna have the maybe start looking at the fuel pump but uh, I think we're gonna call it a day on this one and we'll see you at the next car here we we'll come to look at a Skoda Fabia 1.2 petrol it's cranking but not starting and you can see this guy's got his own jack stands on it here he's tried having a look himself So it's cranking, not starting. What we have done is put a probe tester in here and we've taken off the plugs here, put a probe tester to the negative and live and the fuel pump is working so we know that's working but it's not getting power just along the fuel rail here you've got the uh, pressure valve here we've opened that there's no fuel coming no, coming. no fuel coming so we're gonna turn the engine over to see is there any spark <laughs> you can see there's no spark there so there's no fuel and no spark so it's probably pointing to either an ECU problem or a crankshaft sensor. So uh, in our van we've we've got a spare um, crank sensor. So I think we'll we'll try stick one in a minute before we spend a lot of time going through other stuff. It's always worth a try. If not, it's we can take it back out or uh, doesn't cost a lot, twenty quid or so. Here we've got a replacement crank sensor, and it's fitted just up here behind the engine, underneath the intake manifold. There. So now we're going to plug that in. Now we've put the crank centre in and put the plug back in there. Suddenly getting something a little bit different. When we turn on the key, this wasn't happening earlier on. Now the key's flashing. So we've got a second key. Now the key light's not blinking. still not starting running a scan but that oh, the relays wouldn't show up any would they no it's failing to read the fin number it's not finding the ecu so we manually typed in what ecu it's got and we're just seeing if we can scan it through the manual uh settings there like this but we're not still not getting any sort of vin numbers or anything coming up Chances are we're probably not going to get any engine, any engine faults come up here because we're not going to find it. But it looks at things, and it's exactly what I thought. There, engine control module has no communication, so we've not we're not getting. It's not reading the uh, engine control module. It doesn't know it's there basically. Uh, kind of what I thought it was going to say. So on this one, I think as a mobile mechanic, we'll have to call it a day on that. It's as far as we can go roadside so uh, we've recommended them to an auto electrical specialist local to us we're going to send it down there